So, oh, it's starting to rain here. Let's, let's get tucked inside the trailer. Alrighty, we're out of the rain. Uh, as usual, just squeak it in right, squeak in that job, finish it up right before the skies open up and, and the weather comes down. So the most common question and comment I receive here at the homestead has to do with my tool trailer or my mobile workshop. Now that's a term kind of largely stolen, well let's go with borrowed from Ron Polk and he is really what inspired this whole trailer design and moved towards the trailer in general. So a little bit of a backstory. Uh, before the trailer, I was largely just using my dump trailer, so my orange dump trailer you've seen in a couple videos in the past, and my big truck. And what I would do is just kind of pile all the tools in the back of my truck, not necessarily the bed, but in the back seat of my truck, and that's how I went from job to job. And it worked just fine for a long time. But what ended up happening is I was in a constant state of worry that I had forgotten a tool or couldn't find a tool, and it became more of a headache to have to dig and waste time sorting through that truck to find what I was looking for than just being organized right from the start. And hence, my search on YouTube and looking at the internet and trying to find a better solution to go from job to job or kind of create a mobile workshop. And that's when I came across Ron Polk and his smart wood shop. With all the requests out there, I figured it was time to actually dive into my trailer and give you all a tour of how my current workflow and setup is. Now, I don't want to spend a ton of time going into tool by tool by tool because I think the brand name of your tools is largely irrelevant to the quality of work you can produce, but I will kind of just go through one of some of the things I do own and the things I use most often. All right, so let's start at the back of the trailer here. And the main thing everything is built around is just my internal inside workbench. So as you can see, it rains pretty often and it's nice to have a place where you can kind of get out of the rain and work. And I try and keep this surface as clean as I can at all times. Now underneath there, I have my rollout workbench or my Ron Polk workbench or a modified version of it. And a modified set of stands. Now you've seen in other videos how that rolls out and sets up, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Next to that, I have all my long levels and my squares. So my carpet, my big carpet square, my drywall square, and all my levels pull out. And they all have stops, so they specifically go only to the size of their level. I have acquired a few new levels, some set of Stabilas that don't have a home yet, so I am still trying to figure out where to store those, but we'll get to that at another point. All right, so moving on up. I have right at the back, immediately accessible, I have all of my drills. I shouldn't say all of them, my older drills. They are sitting on just a kind of built custom rack. They're easy to grab. Batteries are directly above them and chargers are directly below them. Now above that, I just have some general storage cases. Those are more or less empty right now. And then I have a small shop vac that's battery operated that is easy to pull out and clean up. So continuing along on this side, I have just sort of a mishmash general collection in the middle, but I do have a row of kind of tool cubbies. They have easy dividers that can be swapped out depending on what's in there. So I have some drills in here. Most of my sanders kind of sit in here belt sanders and pad sanders, and then I also have my jigsaws. So above all of this, I have just kind of a bulk general storage area for screws, uh, things that are kind of what I call deep storage, because I have containers that I move them from my big containers into my small containers. We'll get into that when we talk about the other side of the trailer. Above that, I have a little built area for my track saws specifically my tracks for my track saw. So I have the short one, and then I also have it built long enough that it can house, I think they're 110 or 120 inches, but the long one as well sits up top there. And I quite like this design because it stays nice and flat all the way along, and I don't wind up with any bowing or denting or anything like that to the track saws themselves. I have a radial arm saw that stays in here at all times. Now, in all honesty, I thought I would use this a lot more than I actually do. I was kind of thinking, you know, quick cut every now and then. It might come out in the trailer redesign. I haven't fully decided. Now, typically up the middle, I have my table saw and my big miter saw, but my table saw is in the garage right now. So that's out of the way. Underneath my radial arm saw though is where I store my main shop back. So it stays there and it can plug into the radial arm saw to collect any dust inside here just so I'm not breathing it in if I do cut inside. 
And then the last thing on this side I have is my big compressor cart. Uh, that was largely built when I was attached to pneumatic tools entirely, so it houses my big compressor underneath. And then it's also got a 100 foot hose on the side. So the goal being that I can set this up in the trailer and my hose has generally been long enough to reach anywhere outside on a property. Behind that I store my ladders up top or um, up against the wall, but they're not in here right now. And then I have a few kind of miscellaneous hooks for brooms or shovels or whatever I'm bringing along the way. And then the final thing up front is my main power reel. So that is able to extend fully out. I have a hundred foot cord on there. It can give me power to my trailer. So it's essentially like a shore power setup. And then I have a tool belt hook behind that. Speaking of tool belts, I can take mine off. I don't need to walk around here with it on and get it hung up. All right, so moving on to the other side of the trailer now. And this is where things have been sort of in a state of flux or change from originally when I developed the trailer. Just move those out of the way now. So starting up top, I have a bag that is just straight dedicated to small little plumbing stuff. Um, I don't do very much plumbing, but I do like to install my own taps and fixtures and stuff like that after the plumber has done my major rough in So I do need some plumbing equipment. One of the other things I've been changing over to is uh, a more compact storage system. And specifically, I've chosen the Milwaukee Packout system. I really like the functionality of these storage containers. They're easy to store. And I love that you can take out the trays and you don't need to carry the whole container. So I'm slowly developing uh, a bit of a, a Packout build out, if you will, but I have a finishing one. And then I have a big one for specifically for framing and building. So that's big nails, screws, etc. And that's why I don't have to go into my big bins very often. So as you can see, I still have a whole bunch of other internal organizers. Those will all eventually get switched out into the packouts as well. Then moving towards the back of the trailer, I have my set of Makita drills. These are the only two drills that I do not hang on there. I like these to stay in their case so I can bring them to wherever I'm working. And I also have my bit organizer housed inside of there. And then the final thing in storage up top here are two of Milwaukee's Sistain. I think they're called their Sistainers. So one of the things I like about these Sistainers is their ability to lock together and stack without tipping over. So this is where my setup has differed a little bit from Ron Polk's. He really likes to keep all his tools out in the open, whereas I've started to move a little bit more to kind of keeping mine enclosed and more on the side of organization. So specifically in this side, I have my Makita small router and the bits that I use most commonly. And I like having that all together because I can just grab the sustainer and head out to the job site wherever I'm working. And then in the big sustainer below, I don't have Makita stuff, but this is where I have been housing my two new Milwaukee finish nailers. So I am going to still do a review on these once I've had a few more jobs where I've used them. But so far, very impressed. Down below that, I have another set of cubbies. And this again is for my larger tools that I don't generally like to have in cases. So I start with my big saws at the beginning. Uh, so I have my miter, or my, my miter saw, my skill saw. This is where I keep my plunge cut, my track saw. I have a few sawzalls in here, some angle grinders, biscuit joiner, planer, uh, the oscillating tool, and then I also keep my light in the end there. And then underneath all of that is where I have kind of all my small parts organizations, my, my sandpaper, my screwdrivers, my drill bits, they all stay in this rolling case. But on that note, in the redesign this is going to go, uh, I find that it has become more of a pain and a dump zone than anything else. So you can see I had layout and plumbing and electrical and sandpaper and pliers. But a lot of these are just becoming more or less empty storage that don't need to stay in the trailer. I find I wasn't using the tools. And then finally at the back I have three more drawers for miscellaneous stuff that I do. So I have some drywall and I have my drawer for kind of carpentry and jigs and the Dremel and the 
the Craig jig and another hand plane and it's sort of a, a dump all drawer when it comes to carpentry stuff. Below that I have my big rigid router and some more bits. And then the very very final drawer on this end is screws, uh, fasteners of all different types, nails, uh, it looks like I busted a box there. And this just helps me keep everything organized and always have stuff on hand. I'm trying to minimize the amount of times I need to run to a store to pick something up. And then the last major drawer I have is down at the bottom. And it houses all of my clamps and pry bars. A lot of those right now are sitting in the truck getting ready for a job tomorrow uh, where we will be back to taking the dump trailer. But that is sort of the gist of my layout and what I've been kind of working with for the last two years here at the Homestead. And with this trailer, I've done everything from deck builds to fences to full house flips to basement renovations to patios, everything out of this trailer. And that way I have all of my tools with me at one point in time. So hopefully this gives you guys a few ideas or at least some insight into how I organize my stuff. Thanks time for watching and you know, in the next one we'll be demoing another deck. See you then.